Welcome back, one and all, to another edition of Off the Record, where we go off the record. You see what I did there? We got an esteemed panel of guests in the house today. We got Mamba, which is, you know, the huge. But we also have Molly Helmuth, who has a wonderful backdrop, because even though it's not Thanksgiving as of this recording, it's always Christmas time with Molly around. And we got a cup driver in the house, even though he still is a baby-faced assassin, Harrison Burton joining us here with some spotty shady internet but we'll make fun uh, of it goes on anything <laughs> laggy so we'll see how that's going everybody thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy holiday schedule to join us let's start off out with where we all are right now mamba where in the wild world of sports are you i'm at the, one of the most beautiful private uh racetracks called concourse club uh in miami florida actually so this place is killer they're still working on it yeah, it's a party. Last time I was here, Flow Rider was here. So that was cool. Somebody yeah, killed. you're in Flow Rider. Flow Rider. Hey, <laughs> oh my gosh, so so bad. <laughs> Molly, you look very cold as Mamba was teasing you about, but where are you right now in the wide world of sports? I am in my office, 90 Creative Headquarters, which is in mm-hmm. Mooresville, in the uh, Mooresville Drag Strip Park. So I'm in, uh, I guess, Ray City, USA, as they would call it. HQ. Love it. Uh, Race City USA is not what Harrison Burton's Wi-Fi has. Although, knock on wood right now, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. But your apartment in the Charlotte area is doing fine so far, Harrison? Yeah. If I can get my internet to work, I've never had problems until I try and hop on y'all's show. I don't know what that means. But it's, uh, you know, it's it's good for me. I've just recently kind of moved out of my uh, parents' house. I moved out before the Xfinity season started. So, just trying to uh, trying to figure it out. You know, I'm only 21, so yeah. I'm not the most organized guy. So we're we're getting it cleaned up today. That's my that's my main task. So he's, uh, other than that, it's not bad. He's his wings are starting to he's starting to spread his wings, guys. He's starting yeah. to fly the coop. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'm just a growing young boy. You know, I gotta, I gotta spread my wings. It is a big change though, like on a serious note, right? Like you're 21, you've been in NASCAR for like half a decade at this point. Now you're a cup driver. And now you're living in your own place. Is this the most adult that you felt probably in your whole life? Yeah, definitely the most adult, especially stepping into the cup driver role, right? Like Xfinity, it's still learning and you're still, you're still kind of making your way up, um, obviously. And, and there's less responsibility on you. Uh, being a, a cup guy for like two weeks now, it's like, oh man, it's, it's, uh, it's been a lot more, which is great. You know, it's, it's a lot more responsibility. There's a lot more on your shoulders because you're expected to be the guy, right? You're expected to yeah. be a uh, top level racer in the world. And so, you know, with that comes top level work ethic. And that's been really awesome at, at Wood Brothers and Team Penske. It's been, it's been a lot of work but my guys are all hundred percent bought in. I'm hundred percent bought in and it's been a really productive off season, even though we've kind of just started it. So um, other than that, this is, you know, it's been kind of status quo and then come December 3rd, it's going to get even worse because I'm getting a puppy. So I'm going to have a puppy golden retriever running around my apartment. Oh, uh, that's big time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Was, so now, whose idea was that? Was that your idea or was that Jenna's idea? So this is bad because so my girlfriend Jenna, she dances at a, a dance studio and she does, you know, she works and, and tries to teach kids how to dance and all that. And um, I guess one of the kids' parents had breeds puppies, right? And so they walk in with these two just absolutely adorable golden retrievers. Wow. And she's, you know, we've talked about it. And I've always wanted a golden retriever puppy. And all of a sudden, you know, here's this dog. And so I go over there and meet it. And that, that was my mistake. Once I met the dog, I had to have it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, now I was done. So now I'm, I'm a dog guy and going to have to <laughs> figure that out as well. Dog wow. bad. Wow. Molly, yeah, do you sure. have any pets? Are you a dog gal? I'm a dog gal, but yeah. Um, I adopted a dog. I'm kind of a jerk. I adopted a dog and noticed that I <laughs> like cannot have a dog because I'm gone so much. Yeah. So I had the dog for 16 hours and then I returned it. I heard that story before. All right. I, 16 hours. Yeah. Interesting. That's yeah. the mark you, I've got to beat. 16 yeah, that's hours. Yeah. yeah. I think you'll be good. Yeah. I'm kind of <laughs> 
Oh, man. So, All right. Well, I suppose that we should talk some racing on this show here today. It's the winter time. NASCAR's in the off season. Formula uh, is still happening. But the world of short track racing, that don't stop. That don't quit. As we got the Snowball Derby coming up. The Super Bowl, the Grand Poobah of short track racing coming up in Pensacola, Florida at Five Flags Speedway. Harrison, I know that you're not competing in it this year. I think, right? You're not, correct? No, I'm not, yeah. unfortunately. That's like one of my favorite things in the world to go do is the Snowball Derby, but just logistically it didn't work out this year, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, but you've ran in it four times. You won the pole one year. You had a best finish of fourth. Unfortunately, haven't gotten that victory yet. I know that that may be a goal of yours sometime down the road. Uh, and Molly, you recently raced at Five Flags. So, Mamba, let's pick these people's brains because they know what it takes to get around that racetrack and the prestige and the honor of that race. And Mamba, you've been in short track racing as long as I know anybody has. So what do you want to ask these guys about this race? Because it's as big as it gets. Well, I want to ask, let's, I'll start with Harrison. Cause I was on the trailer with his mom when he was going to qualify for the last one, I think in 2017. Uh, no, maybe it was before that, maybe like 16, I forget. But anyway, I was on the trailer with her and Miss Kim, if anyone knows Miss Kim, is um, very uh, energetic when passionate. she's watching, passionate when she's watching Harrison Red. And her on qualifying night was some of the best content I've ever watched in my life. But it just goes to show how, how intense I think this qualifying is for this short track race. So, you know, tell me about that, Harrison, HB. Tell me about the pressures of this race and just kind of racing in general. Molly will be able to attest to this too, I feel like. Yeah, you know, anytime for me, every time I get in the race car, it's a personal thing, right? Like you want to be the best, you've worked hard for it. And if you're not, then you're going to take it personal. And whenever Snowball Derby qualifying rolls around, I mean, it is like you are under so much pressure. There's like 60 guys there and, all, you know, only I think they take what, like, 20 yeah 28 30 somewhere in that range of car, of guys through qualifying and they're all fast drivers and so it's challenging just to make the race and so <clears throat> to this day my one of my most favorite accomplishments is, is winning the pole for the derby just because of how much pressure you're under how much you have to execute under one moment um and it's just awesome the the coolest atmosphere one of the coolest atmospheres in racing is at five flags speedway you know the night time comes in and it's time to qualify you can look down pit road and see like 60 guys that are all just nervous to go qualify and try and make this show i remember being the most nervous i've ever been in my life to try and qualify for that race so that that's a uh, you know i've raced in a lot of really cool races and so that's a testament to how important it is molly you um you raced for the first time this year in a while. And we talked about it. I remember when you put out your retirement tweet and I was like, racers don't ever really quit. And you're like, I don't know. And then she came back and I may have convinced her a little bit to do so. And I'm glad you did it. And you were going to run the snowflake. And we talked the other day and you might not be because I was looking forward to, you know, going door to door with you this year. I know. And now it might not ever happen. Yeah, so I retired from from the driver's seat two years ago because I started 90 creative and that kind of just took off and um, I love what I do on this side of the business side of motorsports and helping other people with marketing and such so I kind of feel like I found my niche and um, the reason why I got back into a race car a couple months ago was um, Bubba Pollard is one of my clients. I have a really good relationship with him and his family. I do stuff for his personal racing and then that racetrack that they just bought um, this year, Snowy Raceway. And so he always kind of said to me, like, we're going to get you back in a race car. I'm like, I don't have to get back in a race car. I don't need to. Like, I really am like 110% satisfied with not being in a race car. But everything just kind of lined up, you know, where it was a cool opportunity that a lot of people wouldn't say yes to and I didn't want to be the person that said no and so I feel like I kind of probably did it for some of the wrong reasons but it was a really awesome opportunity I'm very very grateful that they gave me that opportunity but at the end of the day when I raced at Pensacola I just said you know this really like I I guess it just solidified that 
the idea that I just, I don't need to be back in a race car again, which is kind of sad to say when you're a racer, like your whole life. But like, I just feel like I found, found where I'm supposed to be in motorsports. And that was the thing when I was down in Pensacola racing, I had clients that were down there. And so I was trying to like be a race car driver, but try to, to continue to work. And then I was racing against some of my clients and I was like, it's just kind of, it just didn't really work. I think that you have to be all in as a race car driver or you have to be all in as a business person. You can't really do both. It's really, really hard. And it was just hard for me to turn my, my brain back on to the racer mindset after being, you know, not in the car for two years. So, um, I just called Bubba and I said, Hey, look, um, I appreciate the opportunity, but you know, I'm just going to go down there. I'm going to work. I'm going to hang out with my friends and family and, um, and just do what I, what I love. And, um, you can stick to the driving. Let's, let's put all the, you know, the focus on you and, yeah. you know, the, the snowball derby is one of the races that Bubba really wants to win. So, um, and I have a lot of great clients that are down there that I'm going to be rooting for. So we're just going to do that. That's really interesting yeah. because, you know, you're a racer at heart. We know that. And yeah. every racer that I have had conversations with, you know, not a lot of them would voluntarily step out of the race car unless it was something that was, you know, out of their control, whether it be an injury, a health issue, uh, some logistical hurdle to overcome. But it sounds like this situation was something where you really were, as cliche as it set, sounds, at peace with the fact that, you know what, you had your time behind the wheel, you enjoyed it thoroughly, you tried it again, you enjoyed yourself, but that's not really you anymore. You know, yeah. you're killing it with 9D. That's your thing. That's what you want to do. That's your passion now. And I don't know of any other driver, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mamba or Harrison too, that has voluntarily said, you know what, thank you for this opportunity to be in this really good car at this prestigious race at this prestigious track but I'm good. And I think that says a lot about you and kind of where you are right now in terms of building the business that's already booming. But I find that really interesting because I don't know of many other people in your position that would have done the same thing. So I commend you for that. Well, yeah. And that's why people think I'm nuts, obviously. Because <laughs> the, first, the first opportunity, everyone was like, you're crazy to say no. Because I didn't jump at the opportunity. When Bubba approached me about the whole thing, I was like, I don't, I don't need to. Let me think about it. Let me just take a couple of weeks. And I had to call people and I'm like, is this the right thing? Like it wasn't in my heart that it was the correct thing to do, but I did it just to say I did it. And, um, and then, yeah, it's like, I think it's, and I said this to a couple of people after the event, I said, it's one thing to get back in a car. If, like you said, you were forced out of, you know, injury or you ran out of money or like, and then you come back cause you, you still want to be a race car driver. So you would probably perform a little bit better um, because your mindset is like, man, I just, I love racing. I want to be in a race car, but I just, I haven't had that for two years. I just like, yeah. I totally switched it off. If I, if I was forced out, forced out of the sport, then I, it probably would have been a completely different thing. But like you said, I was very at peace uh, stepping away and just doing my own thing. So it's weird to say, and I know like people that were invested in my careers, probably listening to this is like kind of hard for them to hear it, but like, yeah. At the end of the day, I think it's healthier for me just to say it out loud and say, I'm happy with where I'm at. And I love doing what I'm doing with 90 and helping other people. And um, yeah. It's real though. <laughs> it is. Like, it, 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 it is. Real. I'm curious, Harrison, she said she went two years without racing and was at peace with that and then got back and, you know, said, I'm good. Two years is a pretty long time since you've been racing competitively, whether it be in Bandolero or k and car up to trucks, Xfinity. What's the longest that you can remember that you've gone without racing something competitively? Ooh, I don't know. Um, when I was a kid, it was always year round, right? Um, when this, the winter came around, there was indoor races for quarter midges. Um, you know, up in Ohio, we would go race. The Columbus Indoor Nationals was cool. Uh, and now that I'm I'm kind of climbed through the ranks. There was always the Derby or the Snowflake or, you know, the Winchester 400 that are kind of right. in the fall months and the winter months. And so really recently it's been now, like the last, when I got to Xfinity last off season, um, that was probably the longest time I've ever been out of a race car. Mm -hmm. And granted still, I was driving go-karts and doing all that. Right. But yeah. to go to an actual race and not, you know, and and not being a 
competition mindset. Yeah, it's it, it's probably been about three months since I've been like five that I haven't raced. Um, and I missed one race. I remember I'm, I've missed one race due to health in my whole life. And I had uh, I had something called uh, shoot hand hand foot and mouth disease. And I know that's kind of weird that it took me out, but what they thought I had was spinal meningitis. And so they gave me a spinal tap. And so after that, my, I had like a leak in my spinal fluid. Right. And so my brain wasn't functioning right. I was passing out all the time. Oh man. And I missed a bristle yeah. truck raid. Yeah. It was not fun. I was, I, every time I would stand up, I would pass out is yeah. basically what would happen. So I missed the bristle Crazy. truck race. Um, and that watched Christopher Bell drive my truck in the 51 Hunt Brothers pizza truck. And I remember to this day, just hating every second of that. And, and like totally the opposite of experience of Molly, which is good for her because she knows for a fact, right? Like she's on the right path. And for me, I have the same experience that I know I'm on the right path because gosh, I hated every single second of watching someone else in my car or truck. Yeah. Um, and I was 100% willing to go get in that race truck. Definitely not even close to healthy enough to do it. Um, and so, yeah, that was the one time I've like missed a race and it still bothers me that I've missed a race for sure. I, wow. I think it's, I think it's, it's interesting the different takes, you know, you know, Molly's like in a great spot. She's like, you know, I'm good. I've done what I feel like I need. Harrison's still grinding to get, this one, Davey, by the way, still grinding to get, uh, get up and now he's on the top tier and trying to make that happen. And then like, I'm here and I'm kind of in, in the middle, right? Molly talked about getting forced out would be different. And, you know, for me, it was like, I kind of was a little bit because, you know, my money ran out, not, that wasn't the first time. And so then it turned into, okay, like I'm not running all the time, but I still want to race once a year uh so i do that well at the same time when you race once a year you're not getting enough seat time right well also if you're gonna get enough return on it you can't just do a local race you got to go do the big ones and if you do the big ones everyone's ready to go and you're like kind of coming in like half cocked and you're like i kind of need a, a whole week to remember how to do this correctly and so my races that i keep picking are like the myrtle beach 400 cool qualified for it no one thought we were qualified for it then it's like all right i want to try the snowflake like i'm only running one a year like why not like it's all a race car it's a race car it's fine qualify for that the first time qualify for it the second time now we're going back this time and it's like i'm like everyone keeps telling me you're stupid you're so dumb you can't just do this once a year and i'm like well but i don't have a choice you. and we kind of are so it's like you know and i enjoy that like i don't if someone came to me and the situation was right. And they're like, hey, let's go race every weekend. Situation's right. Like fun crew. We got, we can just go have a good time. Absolutely. It, I would do it. If someone's like, hey, I want you to go run an Xfinity car. It's got to be the right situation. And then I'm, my brain is changing because I'm kind of, you know, with everything with Mamba Media and then with MPI, you know, and doing all these things and helping people in different areas of the sport. My brain's in a different space where it's like, I, I do it because I enjoy it. I'm not trying to necessarily make it at the cup level or anything. However, if the opportunity arises to go run higher up, like I'll let you boy, I'm down. We'll put truly all over that thing. So it's, yeah. it's interesting to see the different levels because there is levels to this, right? Is it, so it's cool. I think the pressure part matters a lot too. Let's get back to racing. Dirt. Mamba was talking about in the break that Dirt is able to make these big events feel exactly like that. Big events. And they do it more so than asphalt races does Mo yeah. sometimes because the asphalt races a lot of the tracks are relatively similar and dirt there's some character there's some different types of venues different geographical locations etc 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 but two nascar mm -hmm. drivers in the cup series two champions they crossed over into dirt this past week at placerville speedway chase elliott and kyle larson both of hendrick motorsports they were getting down and dirty with it mamba that was pretty cool to see i love when drivers, prominent drivers at that, dip their toes into the waters of different disciplines. I'm all here for it. I just, and Larson also, like, I think it's called Somerville, maybe I forget what it's called, but he just went in as a promoter with Brad Sweet and someone else on a, for a racetrack. Like, I just think that the dirt guys do such a good job 
reaching back into the dirt community and, and keeping that connection, that correlation. And I don't know how, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to bring that same energy to asphalt racing because if asphalt racing can get lined up and get going in the right direction, they could have the same thing that the dirt side has. Obviously the money's out there, right? People are spending it. They want to go racing. They race a hundred times a year. You're telling me that we can't have a, a solid 20 race late model series that runs cu- countrywide. Like car store is good, but it's only in the, it's only in this little area. Pass tour is good. It's only up here. You know, mm-hmm. the Southern, Southern, um, the Spears super West, whatever deal it is, they're good, but they're only out there. I can't even say it, but you know, I just, I want that. I'm, I'm envious of the dirt guys. Yeah. I'm envious of them. Yeah. I feel you. I, I think that, you know, different motorsports disciplines can take things from each other. Cause as I, we've said on this show before, Mamba, a rising tide lifts all ships. I mean, even you Harrison, I'm sure that there's things that you've learned or seen in the truck series, even k and and the Xfinity series that maybe the Cup series could adopt or vice versa, right? I mean, even stuff that's happening in Cup that's permeated down into the lower series of NASCAR, I think a rising tide kind of lifts all ships, no matter how you slice it, whether it's rules, uh, venues, anything like that. Yeah, 100%. And you see it with the Cup series, some, you know, in, in Xfinity and trucks now, uh, the cone rule uh, was a good, hey, that's, when I ran my first late model race, uh, we had the cone rule, right? And so choosing inside or outside on those restarts uh, at a speedway, which was where I started racing late models, was like, oh man, that's a that's a big deal. You better get your lane choice right. And I wish, I wish, man. And I, I know I have I have a couple guys I can talk to about this. <laughs> I wish they did a great, you know, a little bit of a better job showing what decisions were made and and what the outcomes are we have this awesome system now and the fans of the racetrack get to see you know their favorite driver hey he picked the outside here he picked up two rows because no one wants to be on the outside or the inside or whatever it is and now he's that's a gamble right because normally the non-preferred lane is less grip there's going to be chaos up there as a driver you're more nervous because you're like ah man you know i got to beat these guys and i got to find a way to do it in the non-preferred lane you know, I wish there was a way to kind of convey that a little better to the broadcast or the radio cast or, or whatever. And I know it's tough because there's commercials going on at the same time. But that's something that NASCAR has reached back to the short track roots and kind of brought to the top level. And I think the fans enjoy it. So the more of that we can do back and forth, I think it's always great. And like you said, the rising tide raises everyone up. And so I think, you know, I think that that if we all can just get pulling in the same direction, it, it would be, it would be awesome. You're hey, muted, mom. I'm muted. I'm back. Here I am. Hello. Anyway, uh, Molly, you said that uh, you do, I know you do a lot of stuff with Sonoya, uh, the Polage racetrack. So you, you're starting to see some more of the dirt stuff. I mean, you, you've been around it now, but now you're like involved. Yeah. I would like to see, hear your take a little bit about, because you guys just put on like a $50,000 to win race and they're running for what, 35 laps? Like, yeah. So I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. And so there's only one prominent dirt track, Skagit Speedway. So I didn't grow up around dirt racing. And when I moved here, um, my first dirt client was Chris Ferguson in the late model series, super late models. And um, I went to Cherokee Speedway in Gaffney, South Carolina. And I like, there's just like this electricity with, um, with dirt racing. Like if you've never been to a dirt event and especially if you're going from asphalt, knowing asphalt and then going to the dirt track, yeah. it's like a completely different environment. And I absolutely love it. Like the fans are, you know, wearing all of their favorite, it's like NASCAR. All the, the fans are wearing their favorite gaudy t-shirts for their drivers and there's merchandise haulers and there's you know the the drivers are reachable which I feel like in short track asphalt racing we don't we're not necessarily reachable there's not a lot of fans that come to the track and buy a pit pass and go down and meet their fans and walk around with the t-shirts they just go into the stands and watch the race um there's just like a the, the whole environment in dirt racing is just just I don't know you just have to experience for yourself if you haven't um, when I partnered with, with the Pollard family and, and worked with Sonoya Raceway, it's, you, you learn like, or you're, you kind of take a step back and say like, why is asphalt racing not as, um, 
as big as dirt racing. I mean, they just brought back the Eldora Million this year. You, there's no denying that, you know, well, World of Outlaws has that million dollar purse. Yeah. Like and that's the nice. thing. So like you just brought up, um, so we had the Peach State Classic. It was their very first um, ina inaugural race, um, $52,000 to win on Saturday night. And it was $10,000 to win on Friday night. So Friday night for the $10,000 to win, it was 25 laps. For the $52,000 to win event, it was 75 laps. And, you know, we go back to the Snowball Derby and we're racing, you know, for $25,000, I don't know, has the purse always been, I mean, I don't think it's ever increased, um, or so. at least not for a while. And we're racing, you know, hundreds of laps, just to compete for $25,000, where a lot of these, um, a lot of these teams, even just whether you're racing out of your own family team, or if you're running a ride from a different team, like a Donnie Wilson, you know, you're spending 20 to $40,000 to go to the snowball derby, and okay. you're trying to compete just for that trophy and for $25,000. It's just ridiculous. Whereas you look at, you know, Brandon Overton, who has been like on fire this season in the dirt world, he goes to Eldora and he spends, you know, maybe $10,000 to win 50. Like, it's just a completely right. different, it's a completely different thing. And it's just, I don't understand how, or how we get to that point of asphalt racing to be like that um overall with money purses and with you know the fan interaction and the drivers and and stuff like that it's just a completely different different deal from dirt to asphalt Harrison have you ever given any thought to doing some dirt racing because as as we've said like different disciplines benefit drivers in different ways have you ever given any thoughts to doing something like that just for fun or as a one-off I would love to um you know you watch Kyle Larson race and you're like, man, that guy's pretty good. So I want to try and mimic what he does. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, he might make it one day. Right. So maybe, you know, there's that, uh, there's, there's also like Molly was talking about the atmosphere is awesome. And as a, me, as a driver, I feed off of that. I enjoy that. Um, and one thing I want to talk about really quick before we move on to the, your question and Molly brought up a great point was, the merchandise, right? In dirt racing, it seems like there's a, a great job of, this is my favorite driver. This is the guy I'm rooting for. You know, this is why I know his personality or I'm from the same hometown as him, whatever it may be. And, and going to any other sports, you know, you know, their arena. I went to the Panthers game this last Sunday. Everyone is cheering for one team or the other team there's only two right? right so how do you create that hometown crowd how mm -hmm. do you create that you know i don't know i don't know the answer but that's the key to it right is is latching on to drivers because of their personality the way they race something like that you know and dirt racing it's pretty apparent right this guy he runs the top and he's wide open and he's out of control half the time but in control the other half and I like that. So I'm going to be a fan of him. And, and NASCAR, we've got guys like that. We've got Tyler Reddick. We've got guys that are not afraid to hang it all out. Um, and, and Noah Gregson in the Xfinity Series is like that. And then you've got guys like me that are more, I only race asphalt and I run the bottom well and I run the top well sometimes as well. But I'm like a conventional guy, right? So like, how, I make speed that way. So how do you create that i don't know but that's the big challenge with it, with our series and then you know for your question i'd love to go race dirt i think it develops a lot of car control develops different disciplines and tools that you can use in the race car um and i think that's one thing that dirt does a good job of is is you're able to clearly see hey this guy he's running the bottom and he's precise he's like tom brady out there you know he doesn't make a mistake and he runs well all the time and then there's guys that are just on it, and that's cool. I think it's really cool. Go ahead, Mamba. He's got me rolling. No, he's got me rolling. Like, he's so, like, as he kept going, he just kept getting more amped up. I love it. <laughs> he just wants to about it. He wants to go dirt racing so bad. He wants I to run the it, top man. like Tyler Reddick. It's great. <laughs> I can see I it. Dude, I love it. Like, I get so amped up about racing because I know, like, I know as a driver what it's like and how much 
you know, and you guys all know, right? You've been around it for so long. How much is behind it? How much effort and, and, and what you have to do to succeed? Um, and I've succeeded and I've failed. Um, but that teaches me how, how hard it is. So watching other guys succeed gets me excited. So, so yeah, exactly. I, I want to do it. I want to be the best I can possibly be. And I think I've got, you know, the tools. I just have to put the work in to do it. Um, but yeah, like mom said, mama knows me, man. Like I'm pretty even keel. And then when I get excited, it's like straight up. So that's where I'm at right now because I'm, man, it's, it's so cool to talk about this stuff for sure. I normally don't get to. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we're talking about it now real quick before we go to break Molly. I know that you said you've closed that chapter on the driving career, but what about dirt? Have we tried that yet? Do we want to try that? No. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I did. Uh, so like when I used to race, I, I ran dirt one time. It was like a go-kart um, back at home in Seattle. It was fun, but again, not for me. Um, asphalt was my jam at that point. And then yeah. um, I don't know. I just, so at Sonoya, I, they have a side-by-side -side dirt late model and Bubba drove it and I was in the passenger seat. It was so much fun, but it's just not for me. It's, it's, <laughs> I'll ride in it, but I'm not driving it. But it's yeah. I don't know. I just again, I enjoy um, seeing the growth of Snowy Raceway and the in in the big events that we've been putting on, and that's just that's my thing. I I like that. Just leave the boat, leave the driving up to Bubba. You can do that. Yeah, you'll chill in the passenger seat with your camera, and you'll film, and you'll make some good content from yeah. it. No driving for you. Yeah. That's fine. Instagram that's stories. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's You're brave. It. You are brave, though. Brave yeah. The main. Um, it was probably not the safest thing because the seat was like three times bigger than it probably should have been for me. And then the helmet was like an extra, extra large. So I was like bobblehead and the seatbelts didn't fit at all. So I'm like, do not wreck this thing because yeah, we'll be going to the hospital. Yeah. yeah with the, without so any fun. of that other information though, like riding with someone, there's no way. I, oh, I rode so with much fun. I and that's the thing too, like they drive, scary. they drive so much different than like an asphalt super late model. So like when you just like get slung sideways, it's like the coolest feeling. It's so much fun. I can only you guys just have to come to Snowy so that you guys can get in the side by side. All right, Harrison, let's go. <laughs> you want to ride with me or do you want me to ride with you? What do you think? <laughs> I want, I want, uh, you, to, I want I mean, you to ride with David. I want David to drive. That's what I want. I don't think I'm going to ride for anybody. And then Mamba rides with Davey. That's what we're saying? No, no, no. Oh, all right. I'm cool with that. I don't want to jeopardize your career, Harrison. Mamba's, though? Yeah, I mean, break, I'll, I'll take him for break, a ride. That's fine. Uh, break, break, please. Break, please. Can we, so we can lose this conversation. All right. You can toss it to break. Go ahead. Do your thing. We're going to be right back with Off the Record. We're going to never let Mamba throw it to break because that was atrocious. But welcome <laughs> back, everybody, to Off the Record. <laughs> I'm with Mamba, Harrison Burton. And of course, our wonderful 90 creative stylist and content creator, Molly. So uh, I actually had an idea while Harrison was on his monologue and he was getting all jacked up about like merchandising and dirt track racing. I have an idea for a shirt. I'm not sure if you have like your own marketing team or whatever, but I feel like this would be, could be a good thing for somebody like you who's young, who has a, a good legion of fans. Literally just a shirt that says like, I am a Harrison Burton fan. Or like Harrison yeah. Burton fan. Burton Brigade. I feel like those would the sell. It's very simple. People would like post about it and be like, who do you think my favorite driver is? Those would sell. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of like the Alex Bowman like hack, hack. t-shirt. Like it's yeah. simple, but it got, got the job done. Sold probably yeah. pretty well. I like it. It's a good I idea. I charge like 5% royalties. That's not a bad deal. <laughs> not bad. Oh, dang, man. I that's like five percent out of my five percent so you won't be getting much <laughs> or something out i i gotta wait. all right uh let's get to our snowball derby picks for this upcoming race in the off season again it's one of the most prestigious races not just in short track racing but motorsports in general in the united states so everybody better tune in racing america's got your coverage obviously and we'll all be tweeting about it on our social handles i'm sure my will be down there grabbing some great content. Mamba's going to be down there doing a little racing of his own. So let's throw it to you first, Mamba. Uh, before we get your pick, take us through your mindset of getting behind the wheel and ripping this thing. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I actually put a lot of pressure on myself last year because I ran with Lee Falk 
and I love Lee and Mike and, and they have really good equipment and it was the best race car that I've ever been in. And, um, at the same time doing what I'm supposed to do in the car, I had to do what I need to do outside of the car. Cause I had truly on for the first time. It was a big, it was a big opportunity. A for, truly for a big moment. It was truly a big moment. So uh, I was handing out cases of Truly all weekend long. Molly came by and got a couple. The cooler was empty all the time, which was great. I love that. And people really loved it. Like that, that part was really cool, but I, I was so nervous. And then I was so amped up because we were on the bubble that I basically like all my energy went into my hand shaking and wondering <laughs> if we were going to make it on time or not. And we did. But then it was like, oh, snap, I got to race tonight. Like, I had to start drinking coffees and kind of get my energy back to Harrison Burton level. And, no, that's uh, just water. He runs on I, water. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> it's all natural, buddy. Powered by water. <laughs> so, you know, I just, I just put in a really bad race, honestly. Um, but uh, I raced this year with this car, with the Circle Track Warehouse at, in Hickory. And I feel like we have a good package, so. I'm excited. I just want to go race one more time this year and have some fun and make the race and give people free truly. That's what I'm here for. All right. That was good race car driver speak. Now back to your Mamba Media hat. Okay. Uh, who's your pick for the Derby? I know you got a lot of guys to pick from, a lot of big names, and I know that you got one in mind. So let's hear it. So my favorite is always Bubba Polly. Like, I love Bubba. That's my dude. Molly um, did not pay him to say that. But, but yeah, no, no. <laughs> uh, but – you know, if I'm going to put on my analyst hat here um, and take my heart out of it, I'm, I'm going to say Stephen Nassie because he's been right there. Like he, he's won it and then it's been taken away from him. So I feel like, yeah. you know, he's kind of due for a full one. And then my dark horse is going to be Derek Griffith. Got to give some love to the New England boy uh, coming down from New Hampshire. So that's All what right. we got. I like the pick. I like the pick. Harrison, I know you'll be watching because obviously once you're in the snowball derby, you can't take your eyes and your ears away from it. Who's your pick to win this thing? I think it's going to be two, either one or two groups of people. It's going to be a, a guy like Bubba who's been around for a long time, been trying for a long time, mm -hmm. or it's going to be a really young kid. I think there's, there's kind of um, in my head, I'm, kind of mixed up on it i feel like sammy smith is going to be a good a good one to look out for great pick. um but honestly i've been beaten so many times finished second so many times to bubba pollard um now i've beaten him a couple times too but he beat me more than i beat him i'd say and he's he's fast so i'm gonna have to pick bubba that's everyone's pick probably uh but i have personal experience watching him race at five flags yeah I, drive you know driven a lot of races there and i've had to really work my butt off to try and beat that guy so i have a lot of respect for him and the way he kind of does his program so i'm picking bubba i think that's that's the guy that's going to win um if not him then sammy but i think i think bubba's going to get it done okay two solid picks one definite pick from harrison burton molly i wonder where you're going to go with this because it's not like you have a dog in the fight or anything all right yeah i have multiple um <laughs> which is so hard because I, I have a lot of really high profile clients. Um, you just want everybody to have a good time. Don't you? I, I really do. Like as long as one of my clients wins, <laughs> I'm able to capture in victory lane and create like an awesome video. That's all I want. So, Run through your list. Who, who are we working with with 90? So I'm um, obviously Bubba. I do stuff for Ryan Priest and he's going to be making his super late model debut. So that'll be fun and interesting. Um, cool. I do work for the Wilson Motorsports. So Sammy Smith, Chandler Smith, which they've obviously been really, really strong this year. Um, you know, Sammy's been winning all the races, but Chandler's been extremely strong. He's just had a lot of, you know, crappy luck. Yeah. Um, so those are all, all really great picks. Um, and then it's, you know, Derek Thorne. I think I'm going to be doing some work for him. Um, and he's really, really strong. He just has some bad luck at times, but he's always super fast there. Probably going to be sitting on the pool this year. He's super mm -hmm. good at qualifying. Um, yeah, I can't, you know, and then like the younger, the younger drivers, like, you know, Jake Garcia, he's, he's been there at the end of the snowball derby as well. And he's ran really strong this year. So I just any of my clients that um that that finish on top all that's that's a win in my book um and then it's obviously you know people are kind of 
putting Bubba to the side right now because he hasn't yeah. obviously ran that great this year, and he'd be the first to admit that. Um, but I'm interested to see because you know he has some some changes happening with his team this with this coming weekend with um, with Port City. So um, I'm excited to see their team and how they do. And um, but any any driver that wins, that's a client of mine. I'll be happy for him. People pleaser Molly. I love I it. Like uh, Mamba, who do you yeah. think I'm going to pick? Because I think you know who you – you think you know who I'm going to pick, but I don't know if you know. I don't think I know. I think you're going to pick Ty Majeski, but I don't think – I'm guessing. I don't, I don't really know. I, I'm not – I don't have free rent in your head. Not correct? And Well, actually, that is correct. How do we leave him off the table, though? How do we yeah, leave – Yeah, I don't know how you guys left the, the defending champ all on the table. I, I will I'll, say I'm not picking Ty. Okay, I'm picking, picking the man who finished second to him last year, Derek who Phil won Hoffman. the pole the last two years, who actually was at Phoenix Raceway. I saw him like standing on pit road during the championship race. I was like, what are you doing here, Derek Thorne? I think the West Coast ace is finally going to get her done. He's a k and West champion. He is so, so damn good on the West Coast. And I just don't think that most people, guilty as charged, by the way, on the East Coast, recognize and realize how talented the west coast of this country is when it comes to motorsports awesome. especially super late model racing Derek thorne has wanted this for a long long time like molly said he's blazing fast for qualifying he's won two poles in a row no reason why he can't do it three times in a row he finished second last year he could erect tie for the win that's not his style i think he does one better and Derek thorne gets the win that's yeah, not a bad pick probably is one it? of the most underrated drivers yeah you know what also he is? He's a grinder, baby, and that's what we love about him. <laughs> Derek Thorne's yeah, funny Derek, as hell, too. He's fast, man. That's another yeah. guy that, you know, qualifying at the Derby, it's a guy that capitalizes on the moment, does a good job. So I don't know how I didn't – how we left Ty Majeski on the table. That's another guy that We're done. kind of whooped my tail a couple of times. That dude is really fast in any super late model, so – um, yeah, growing up, kind of the, the two guys that I feel like made me better and, and kind of helped me be better just by being really strong competition was Bubba Pollard and, and Ty Majeski. So, um, yeah, those are the guys that are, you know, on my, like, Super Late Model Mount Rushmore, those, those are two guys that are on there. So, yeah, Derek Thorne's going to be strong as well. It's, it's going to be. Real quick, before, we, before I let Davey send us home, uh, Ty did just win the Florence 400, which used to be the Myrtle Beach mm -hmm. 400. And he Sammy Smith it. also recently won the Winchester 400. As well. Right. And Ty won it with uh, Chad Bryant, and they were doing a, a memorial uh, scheme and commemorative of Briggs Cunningham, uh, who used to own Cunningham Motorsports, um, that race team, and gave a lot of a lot of guys like you know like RB and PK um, their their starts. So Chase Briscoe too. Chase Bisco too. So shout out to that. That was pretty cool. Yep, absolutely. Well, guys, this has been fun. I love talking short track racing with two of the best, two of the best to do it. And obviously one of the best content creators out there. We didn't even get to talk about 9D Creative. We ran out of time for that. We didn't even talk oh, about yeah, Harrison, your upcoming rookie year with your next gen test. I mean, we got to run this back at some point because you two are wonderful figures in motorsports. And we so, so appreciate your time and a busy holiday season. So Happy Thanksgiving, or excuse me, happy Christmas and a merry off season to you guys. And we will catch you next time on Off the Record.